Okay, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'ad, rabbi yishrah li sadri wa yisili amri wa hlulu uqdatan min lisani yifqahu qawri. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Toba Night. Toba Night is an initiative that I set up for every Thursday, today is on Friday because yesterday I couldn't do it, but every Thursday we do a live on Instagram and the objective of this live is that we remember our sins, okay? You don't have to do it on a Thursday, it's not a bid'ah like that, you can do it any day of the week. But it's just the day of the week that we decided that we would, we, we would give a reminder to remind the people to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sins that they might have done during the previous week. And we sin day in, day out, each and every single day. Uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said, Kullu bani Adam khatta. All of the children of Adam, all of us, all the human beings, we all make mistakes. Wa khayrul khatta'in at But the best of sinners and the ones best of those who make mistakes are the ones who repent from their sins. So that's our objective right now, is to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remember our sins. And we always try to tackle this issue of remembering our sins and repenting from different angles. So sometimes, you know, you're going for a low in your life, a spiritual low. Uh, your iman is low when you're just drenched in sins. So at that time, you might need a motivation to basically come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a reminder, as they say, to remember the reality of this world and the next life. So inshallah today I'm going to approach it from a bit of a different angle. We've been kind of looking at it from the angle of the day of judgment, death, sins, punishment, destruction in the previous Tawbah night lives. Today inshallah ta'ala we're going to look at it from a bit of a different angle. And I'm not going to tell you outright exactly what it is, but I want to start off by narrating to you a statement from Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the... Sahabi of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companion who took over after the death of the Prophet. He was the Khalifa. Khalifa means the one who takes over after you. So the Prophet's Khalifa, the one who took over the, the, the affairs of the Muslim Ummah after the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam was Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was a man who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to in the Quran as the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is a man who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that without going to, into his virtues too much to sum it up, he was the greatest man from this Ummah after the Prophet. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is number one and then after the Prophet is Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. No questions asked. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy and break the backs of anyone who curses him radiallahu anhu. So I want to mention to you a statement by him and the statement is narrated by it's actually brought to us by Imam Ahmed in his kitab, Al-Zuhud. He said, بَلَغَنَا أَنَّهُ إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ نَادَ مُنَادٍ He said, it reached us. We were informed, we were told that on the Day of Judgment, a caller will call. There will be an announcement that's made on the Day of Judgment. أَيْنَ أَهْلُ الْعَفْوِ أَيْنَ أَهْلُ الْعَفْوِ Where are the people who used to forgive? Not just forgive, but عَفُوْ or عَفْوْ it means that you, it's like, you know, when, 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 when you write something on a board marker, you, you don't just cross it out. That's what forgiveness is like, because when you just cross it out, this is when you rub it out, you erase it, it no longer exists. You rubbed it out. Where are the people who used to forgive to that level, where they would totally forget about it, erase it from their minds? People would harm them, people would wrong them, people would diss them, people would insult them, people would mess them up. He do not forgive. Where are these people? Someone will say on the day of judgment and announce what we've made. Where, 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 where are these people? Bring them. Where are they? فَيُكَافِهُمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ بِمَا كَانُوا مِنْ عَفْوِهِمْ عَنِ النَّاسِ And then it will be said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to suffice them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of this group of people. Why? Because of the fact that they used to forgive other people. Allah is now going to forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now going to forgive them. What do we learn from here, brothers and sisters? We have sins, right? And we want to be forgiven for these sins. Well, how do you expect Allah to forgive you? If you don't forgive others. It's funny. Because we are, we are, we are sinning every day. Every day we're harming our own self by sinning against Allah. We're disobeying Allah, we're letting Allah down, we're disappointing Allah, we're transgressing Allah's boundaries every day, day in, day out. And we don't want to be punished. 
we don't want Allah to not forgive us. Yet at the same time, we don't want to forgive others. How do we expect to be forgiven? Is it worse for someone to sin against you or is it worse for you to sin against Allah? It's worse for, you, for someone to sin against... <coughs> 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 it's worse for someone to sin against Allah So if Allah With his greatness And his might And his power And his majesty And his highness Is willing to forgive you and me Who are so low Yet me and you who are low Can't forgive someone else who's low Is it because We think we're great Do you think you're worth I'm, I'm being a bit like, direct now do you think you're you're significant? Do you think you're important? No. Allah is important. Allah is above his throne. He's so high, his throne is above the seven heavens. That's how high he is. We're so low, we're down here. <coughs> we are more insignificant to Allah than an ant or a cockroach is to us. I remember I was in Texas and I was making wudu in the masjid. And... There was a cockroach Because they have cockroaches there, right? There was a cockroach You know like when you make wudu In the little wudu section Where the water falls The little drain There was a cockroach that was there Now if you guys know If a cockroach falls on its back It can't ever be flipped over I mean it, it can't flip itself over, right? So when it falls on its back It's stuck So I remember I was making wudu For the dhuhr prayer so This is in the afternoon Around about 1pm <coughs> And there was a cockroach on his back, couldn't move. And I thought to myself, I don't care. <laughs> You're a cockroach. You, you stay there, do your thing. And I thought eventually maybe someone will, you know, maybe either kill it or take it out. Or it will just kind of like, the water will just drain it through. I came back for Isha prayer. And I went to the wall door. Guess what? Seven, six hours, eight hours later, I see the cockroach in the same place. I was shocked. I thought to myself, how many hundreds of people must have gone into the masjid, made wudu, seen the cockroach? But no one cared about the cockroach. Enough to flip it over or just take it out. Just send it back out. No one cared. So at that time, not that I'm trying to say I'm righteous for this or anything like that, but you know, I told one of the kids, I said, pick up the cockroach and take it outside so it can live and set it free. <laughs> because as nice as I am, <laughs> inshallah, I'm not about to touch a cockroach. And them little kids, sometimes kids, kids are dirty and messy. <laughs> they'll, they'll touch like feces on the floor if they have to. So touching a cockroach is like, it's like, it's like luxury for them. So I said, like, pick up the kid. I was like to the kid, pick up the cockroach, take it outside. I thought, well, but that just amazed me. And I remember I just, I just went away thinking to myself, like we, compared to the cockroach, are a greater creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're more significant and we're a higher creation. Yeah, the cockroach is so insignificant to us that we're not going to think twice. Like, let me take the cockroach out, let it live, let it, let it die in the drain. But you know what? The gap and the distance between how great we are and how insignificant the cockroach is to us that gap, if you compare us and Allah, is far greater. To Allah, we are less insignificant than the cockroaches to us. Yeah, Allah still sends His mercy to you. He's got no reason to forgive you. He's got no reason to bless you. No reason. Except the fact that He is Ar-Rahman, the merciful one. He is Al-Ghafur, the one who forgives. He is al afu the one who forgives. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So despite our insignificance, he still so, so so think about it. Imagine the point I'm trying to make is imagine if a cockroach disses you now. Imagine if a cockroach vi cockroach violates you, backbites you. Are you gonna have any are you gonna have, you're like already you're a low creation, already you're low to me, you're a cockroach, fam. And now you're gonna backbite me. You're gonna swear at me. You're gonna cuss me. You're gonna harm me. You're gonna create problems in my family. You're gonna you're gonna backstab me. You know you're gonna do things that human beings do to harm. Imagine a cockroach did that. You're gonna be like, I'm never forgiving this cockroach. Furthermore, I'm gonna step on this cockroach and finish it. 
remember, imagine, because I've got power over you. So I, I've got power over you. You're going to disrespect me and you're going to expect me to forgive you. No. But imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine how much more powerful he is compared to us. And how much more weaker we are to Allah compared to how weak the cockroach is to us. And we have the audacity to violate the rights of Allah. Yet we still want to be forgiven. We say Allah don't punish us. Don't stamp, don't finish us and destroy us the way we would destroy a cockroach. We still want to be forgiven like that. And he does forgive us. But we don't want to forgive the other human being. So how do you expect Allah to forgive you? How? I'm asking you a question. Al Jazau min This is a this is a is a principle that we have in our religion. That you'll be rewarded with regards to what you did. So you want to be forgiven on that day for the pornography that we watch, for the girls that you slept with, for the guys that you slept with, for the guys that you kissed, for the sisters that you for the you, for, for all the filth that you did, for every time sister walk out of the house without hijab, without makeup, for every time you swore, every time you listened to music, for every time you played, you know, you disrespected your mom, your dad, every time you missed prayer, you want to be forgiven for all these things that you don't want to forgive another human being. Do you know the way you violated the rights of Allah? No human being will ever violate you. How you violated Allah. Rights The way you and I invite Me, me, me I'm included in this The way we violated The rights of Allah No human being Will ever, ever, ever Violate you The way we violate The rights of Allah Matter of fact Did we not take an ayah In the previous Torah nights Where Allah said If Allah was to hold The human beings to account For all the wrong that they did If Allah was to punish us And hold us to account If Allah was to be just And hold us to account For all the sins that we did There would not be A single creature Left on the face of the earth Everyone would be destroyed Because that's the level Of our sins yeah, we want to be forgiven. Now the statement that I mentioned to you was a statement from Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was, and, and you know what's amazing is because there's something that happened in his life which is so powerful. Something that happened in his life which is so powerful. Because he was a man who forgave. So I want to tell you the story that he kind of went through in his own life that will really make this more powerful, the concept of forgiving. So you know he's not a person just just saying this. Take, he's not just teaching people, hey, Bismillah. He's not just teaching people forgive and forget, forgive and forget, forgive and forget. And he didn't do it himself. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had a daughter, and his daughter was Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha married the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you have to understand something. His daughter Aisha, who was the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has a relationship with her on three levels. And I'm going to tell you the story in a second, but you need to understand this relationship first. He had a relationship with her on three levels. Level number one is that she's his daughter. So is a man going to love his daughter? Yeah, of course he is. But you're going to go to levels for your daughter. The second relationship that he has is the fact that she is the wife of the messenger. Alayhi salatu So he's got... He, he he cares for her and loves her even more because she's the wife of the Prophet. Like for example, if you've got a friend, someone that you really love, and you know that they've got kids or they've got a spouse, you're, you're obviously you're not going to be jamming with his wife. You're not going to be jam you're not going to be doing that. You're not going to be like chilling with his wife or have a friendship. But it's like, that's my friend's wife. Like, you kind of feel like a responsibility. Like, you know, if if if, if something happens to your friend, you're gonna you're gonna make sure you send the money, you're gonna you're, you 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 you're, you're gonna play your part. You're not going to free mix, you're not going to chat to her because that's the next man's wife. But the point is that, you know, that concern, that love is there. But that's, my, that's one of my best friends. But obviously the Prophet Ali Sassam was the best friend of Abu Bakr. And he's the messenger of Allah. So he's got a deeper, his, his relationship is even strengthened now. Because he might not love his daughter as much as he might have generally loved other members of the Prophet's family. Because the Prophet's family have a special, 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 special place in our hearts. Then there's a relationship on a third level, which is what? The fact that she is the mother of the believers. Because as we know, the, the wives of the Prophet والسلام, are the mothers of the believers. Ummuhat al Mu'minin. Your mom is your mom because she told you she's your mom. But Aisha radiallahu anha and the rest of the Prophet's wives are our mom's Why? Because Allah told us they're our moms. So she is the daughter of Abu Bakr, but she's also the mother of the believer, so she's on a motherly level to him, and she's also the wife of the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, who just happens to be his best friend. So this is a woman who he really, really loves. This is, this is his daughter, Aisha, radiallahu anha. She's got respect, level, care, concern in his heart. Now why is this relevant to the task at hand? Because in Medina, one of the hypocrites, the kafir, Abdullah ibn Ubayy al he he spread a rumor 
saying that Aisha radiallahu anha fornicated, that she slept. She slept with another man, which is a lie. And Allah defended it in the Quran. And about 10 verses in the Quran came down defending her honor. And may Allah break the back and destroy the ones who curse her to today. Because Allah defended her. And it's, it's, it's disbelieving in the ayat of Allah to insult her. <coughs> but basically this rumor was spread. From those who spread this rumor was a companion called Mista radiallahu anhu. Mista. Mista was one who got involved in the rumor. He was a companion. He was righteous. But he slipped up. He participated in the battle of Badr. He fought in the battle of Badr. Huh? He's from the, the Ahl Badr. Like he made a mistake. Like I said, we all sin, right? So he fell into this mistake where he kind of carried on the rumor of the slander of Aisha radiallahu anha. So now when this happened, Abu Bakr became upset. You know why? Because Mista was a relative of Abu Bakr. He was one of Abu Bakr's relatives. And he was poor. And Abu Bakr used to fund him, give him money, take care of him. Mista was, was, was being given rizq by Allah through Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr is thinking, hold up. I fund you. You got food in your plate because I fund you with Allah's permission. And you're going to diss my daughter who happens to be the Prophet's wife. Who happens to be the mother of the believers? So imagine this rage and anger he has inside him. In a situation like that, you might spark a person. But he controlled himself. <coughs> and from all the levels of anger that he had, the most he said was, he said, I'm not going to give you money no more. I'm not going to fund you no more. No more money. No, 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 no. You diss my daughter, the prophet's wife, the mother of the believers. No, I'm not going to give you no money. When this happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down an ayah saying to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Allah praised Abu Bakr in the ayah. Then after that, Allah said, وَلْيَعْفُ وَلْيَصْفَحُ Forgive him. Basically, Allah said, forgive him. Turn the page over. Don't hold, don't hold it against him. <coughs> then Allah says, أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ And then Allah gives him an incentive to forgive him. Would you not also like Allah to forgive you? Allah says, so let it go. Let it go. Do you want Allah to forgive you for the sins that you've done? Forgive him. Imagine that. Abu Bakr forgave him. Went back to funding him. Went back to pain. You understand? This is this this. It, I don't think anyone here can say that they went through what Abu Bakr went through. Abu Bakr got wronged on levels. Imagine pe you, pe people going around <coughs> saying your daughter she slept with another man. Your daughter she slept with another man, and forget that because that might have happened to you. But this is not. This is this is the prophet's wife. She's the mother of the believers. Nah, none of none of none of us have been through pain like that. Because this was a man who really loved the prophet and he felt the prophet's pain. Nah, we ain't we, we ain't we ain't been we ain't been harmed the way he's been harmed. <coughs> and if he can forgive in an instant, because Allah said, Would you not like Allah to forgive you? You want Allah to forgive you? So forgive. You want Allah to forgive you? So forgive. And you know what? Some people might be sitting here saying, you know what, yeah, like, I forgive people and I forgive everyone in my life. <coughs> I forgive everyone in my life. But there's one person right now. There's one person who done this one thing. I just can't forgive that. I forgive everything and everyone. I've, it's gone, I've forgiven. But this one thing now is too much. I cannot forgive this person. <coughs> I cannot forgive this person. Okay, so so let's run with that for a second. Let's play this scenario out. Uh, let's just say that someone hurt you so bad that you really, really, really can't forgive them. Okay, let's play with this. Let me take you to the day of judgment. Let me take you to the day of judgment and show you how this might play out. 
So everyone is standing there. <coughs> in rows, in racks, in line, standing there, waiting for Allah to pull them out. Waiting for Allah to pull them out so they can be questioned. Remember, every person will be spoken to individually by Allah. Allah will bring you out individually, everyone, and address you for what you've done. And then Allah calls your name and you come. Allah says, this person, you, you come forward now. And then you come forward. Two angels, one angel, Sa'iq, pushing you forward, saying, get, get forward, get in line. Allah's calling you, dragging you out, pulling you. Taking you to the maqam where you're going to stand Where Allah is going to question you and engage you privately <coughs> And then the second angel there is a witness Sa'iqun wa shaheed Witness To testify Yes, he did this, he did this, he did this So you're brought forward now Billions of people behind you You're there alone, standing in front of Allah Hellfire is there, raging Angels are lined up, ready to drag you to the hellfire if Allah says take you to the hellfire or to paradise if Allah says take you to paradise. And imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you, My slave, I've forgiven you for everything. But there's one thing inside your book. This one thing we're going to talk about it though. One thing we're going to address. Would you like that to happen? <coughs> On that day. The same way you said, I forgive everyone. I forgive everything. But one, one thing, this one thing that this one person did, I can't, I can't let it go. No, no, no. Imagine if Allah says the same to you. Because that one thing that Allah might want to bring up with you and say, no, no, this, this one thing, we're going to talk about it. I forgive everything. But this right here, imagine that one thing is one prayer that you missed. Imagine that one thing is one girl that you slept with. One girl that you did something haram with, my brothers. Or one girl who you violated. Or vice versa for the sisters. Imagine that's that thing is one time you disrespected your parents. All of these things. Hellfire. Hellfire. <coughs> Imagine that. You don't want that, right? I know I don't want that. So forgive. Forgive. <coughs> forgive me, guys. I got a cough. Just let me let it out. Just one sec. Let me let it out. <coughs> I've been ill for the last couple of weeks. Make die for me, please. So imagine that that's going to happen to one of us. We don't want that. I'm going to end with the final hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his companions of a man. <coughs> there wasn't much good known about him. There wasn't much righteousness known about him. But there was one thing he used to do. that He used to lend money to people. He used to give loans. And when he would lend money, he would expect people to pay him back. But then he used to tell his workers, his people that would work under him, that would be under him, he would say, listen, if you find someone who can't pay back the debt, forgive him. Tell him he doesn't need to pay it back if he's broke. He was forgiving people. Money, money they owed him, he was forgiving him. The Prophet wasallam said, when this man died, because of that, Allah forgave him. Allah forgave him. You want Allah to forgive you? For all the sins that you've done? My brother, my sister. <coughs> you need to forgive. You need to forgive. Right now, just ponder with me on the sins that you've done in your life. The sins that you've done today. The last week. Since the last days, just remember the sins. Let's just, just think about the sins. Let's be real. It's haram to watch TV. The music. In the, in the movies, the shows that you watch. <coughs> Men watching TV and girls, women are not wearing hijab. You watch it, you're looking at women that are haram for you, fam. The plots, the filth, the kissing scenes and all that kind of... Just watching TV, the sins that you've done. 
watching social experiments where people are walking up to girls and you're watching, watching the YouTube videos, not knowing you, little things that you that you forget. Remember, little sins become big sins. Put them together, and then there's the major sins. Just imagine that Allah holds you to account for. You want Allah to forgive you, man. That's the case. Forgive the ones who you have have that have harmed you. <coughs> if you actually, if these people know that you haven't forgiven them, and they know you have a beef with them, call them up as soon as the life ends and say, you know what, my brother in Islam or sister said, you know what, my sister in Islam, we're good. And 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 don't be look, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, didn't just say, oh, I forgive you. No, he said, I'm I'm gonna go back to funding you. We're gonna go back to normal. We're, we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna show you it's, it's good now. Some people might be so toxic in your life that it might not be wise to go and like, have a relationship, but at least leave things on good grounds. <coughs> you do that. That might be the reason you go paradise. That might be the reason Allah says, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to forgive you too. So who is going to repent to Allah today and come back to Allah and seek forgiveness from Allah? And at the same time, they're going to forgive. They're going to forgive those who harm them. I'm going to put the comments on and I want to hear you guys engage with me, inshallah ta'ala. Who's going to do that? Who's going to forgive others? And then based upon that, he's going to go ask Allah to forgive them and say, Allah, the fact that I forgave this person for what they harmed me, knowing how bad it was what they done to you, say, Allah, you know how hard it was for me to let this go. But Ya Rabbi, I let it go for you. Based on that, please let it go for me and forgive me for what I've done. Who's, who's going who's to do that now? <coughs> Why this is me, mashallah, Allahumma barik. Hisham Street Workout said, I am Allah, Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. And someone said, What if I can't forgive? I don't know what you mean. I don't know what that means. You just have to forgive. Say, You know what? Make dua for that person. Allah, I've let it go. Just let it go. Don't hold on to it. Just move on. Wondering, so said me. Allahu Akbar. Darth, even, I think it says, Inshallah, I will. <coughs> Elias said, I will. Someone said, if you forgive someone, does that mean you can't pray for Allah to punish them anymore? Yes, it means you should say, Allah, forgive them. You should say Allah forgive them because you don't want Allah to punish you. We don't want Allah to punish no one. We say Allah, we, I, just forgive them, forgive me. At the end of the day, we just want to go Jannah, right? In Jannah, no one's going to remember this harm that we did to each other. Everyone's just going to be living it up. So if helping you get to Jannah means Allah forgive them and don't punish them, and for me to make that dua, then I'm going to do that because at the end of the day, what benefit is it me that you got punished and I didn't make it to paradise? And, and V, would I care if you didn't get punished for a wrong that you did if I'm chilling in paradise? <coughs> I love you for the sake of Allah, man. Kid bro said, I'm in a very bad position, bro. I've got so many enemies and feel like I'm running out of time. I've so many people after me. I don't know what to do. DM me because it seems like you've got a specific private situation. DM me, inshallah. Da -da. How to let go of past memories which keep holding us back. Inshallah, da -da. I'll try and address that in a, in a different one. I've done stuff like that in the past. I've mentioned stuff like that in the past. It's just a bit of a different thing. I and listen, can I can I tell you that something? Yeah. Um, just to show you, I'm I'm doing this with you. 
I don't know if you guys saw recently, but there was um there was a meme that went viral about me. And you had all these Muslims, sadly, that were mocking me, but not, not even, it was, I didn't really care that they were mocking me. They were mocking the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? <coughs> In the memes, that was annoying. And, um, in like, I remember in like two, three nights, it went viral. It went viral. And uh, it was like, yeah, man, you had thousands of people just slandering me, mocking me, whatever have you. And uh, I forgive them all. I forgive them all. I don't, I don't want Allah to punish them. And I appreciate, I know a lot of people out there showing love and, and defending me. And you didn't have to do that because I'm not worthy of being defended. You know, when the people, when they do, you know, attack you like that, really and truly it's because of my own sins. But, um, yeah, man, I'm just, the only reason I'm sharing this with you guys is, uh, so you you know you guys can see I'm 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 also implementing what I'm saying. Right? If you do you guys know what it's like to be like mocked internationally online, to wake up in the morning where articles are being written about how this is the the biggest, most famous meme in the world. <laughs> do you know what that's like? Do you do you, do you know how 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 heavy that is? <laughs> you know? I forgive them. So if I can let people go, which is violated me. <laughs> I'm sure you can let people go, inshallah. The Prophet them went through worse. Huh? The Prophet them went through worse. He forgave. They came to Ta'if. He came to Ta'if. Give da'wah And the peasants The poor people The ones who he loved And had a Had a, had a care for them Had a soft spot In his heart for them <coughs> They started pelting him With stones Blood dripped from his Feet Soaked into his sandals Alayhi salatu wasalam Allah sent down the angel Jibreel and said I brought with me The angel of the mountains Muhammad said a word and this angel is going to bring the two mountains together and destroy Ta'if, the city, the village from where these people were in the middle. Allah doesn't destroy it. The Prophet said, nah, he forgave them. Yeah. Forgive people. Understand? Forgive people. Anyways, is there a reward for giving people who wronged you? Yes, didn't you hear the whole life? The reward is Allah's gonna forgive you. Barakallahu feek for your kind words, Sister Asma. It's very kind of you. I love you for the sake of Allah. I swear by Allah, you guys don't know. You guys don't know. Rabbul Kaab, you guys don't know. I love you all so much for the sake of Allah. That real talks, man. I just want everyone to start praying. Start worshipping Allah. On the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's, 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 that's what I want I just want everyone to just come to the deed We're gonna die one day man We're gonna die We're gonna come back to Allah I just want when you guys go to Allah You go to him in a good way Understand? That's all That's, that's, that's why I, I do this, wallahi. Anyway, salam alaikum, inshallah, with the head
Bachi, but I said, man, am I stuck up in a trap here? Little you trying to chef prayers up. It's hard to just forgive. Well, that's true, Akhi, man. But remember, the Prophet Sallam, his uncle Hamza, radiyallahu anhu, was killed by a man called Wahshi. He not only killed him, but he took his uncle's chest, ripped it open and took his heart out. He disfigured his body. This man came and he accepted Islam. And the Prophet forgave him. And we were told to follow him. You understand that? That's what we need. At the end of the day, I don't care what you do to me. I need to be concerned about what I've done to Allah. And we've all done, we've all wronged our Lord. So if we've wronged our Lord, at the end of the day, that's what my concern needs to be. And one of the ways for me to get forgiven by my Lord is to forgive people here. You understand, Ak? So that's why man's on forgiving these people. At the end of the day, it's not even too tough that I really care about you. I'm caring about my own self. So I'm saying it's okay I forgive you. So I can get forgiveness on the other side. Forget, when you forgive, it shows you're humble and you're not arrogant. Because you can't come to Allah with arrogance. To, it shows that you, you don't think that you're something sick, that you don't believe that you're important. No, I'm low. Lord, you're important. So then Allah said, okay, I forgive you now because you've humbled yourself to me. If a person says, no, I'm not going to forgive for whatever reason, then why? Do you, think, do you think you're worth something? Do you think you're worth something? Oh, we ain't worth nothing So what if someone wrong you? That's the point I can't remember who One brother goes um, Bro I'm being serious These guys a couple months ago Stabbed up T1 and he died One Somali brother Can we forgive How can we forgive these bears Shall I tell you something like One up First thing, may Allah have mercy on the brother who died. You guys know my 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 good friend Gulad, brother Gulad, huh? His cousin got murdered. His young cousin, innocent kid, will lie. Genuinely, wasn't an innocent kid. I know the story. He wasn't he wasn't involved in any madness. But he got murdered in Ramadan. The guy who murdered him, then started boasting about it on Twitter. The brother said to, called me and he said, look, can you get me in touch with one of the elders from the ends? He told me, because I knew one of the elders from the ends who's, who does that in the ends and he kind of, you know, works with the youth. And he said, look, can you arrange a meeting for me and this guy? Me and the guy who murdered my cousin. I said, why? He said, I just want to sit in front of him and tell him, I forgive you. I said, I, like, I forgive you. His other family members wanted to take revenge. He just said, no, forgive. That's connected to Iman, fam. And, and he didn't get to meet the guy. The guy got arrested. But the point is that that's the intention that he has. In the Malak Malu Bini, the person will be rewarded in accordance to their intentions. Do you understand? So it can happen, bro. But it's your Iman needs to be strong. You understand? Anyway, inshallah. I'm gonna bounce, inshallah ta'ala. I love you guys for the sake of Allah. Inshallah, take it, huh? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah bless you all.